G.I. Joe, and I was in Scouts, earned the rank of Eagle Scout. I always thought I would one day join the military and, and serve my country. Uh, but it's actually my dad, who is the one who got me involved in, in, in the appreciation of the military, who, when I graduated from high school, wouldn't sign the papers for me to join, because I wasn't 18 yet, and he encouraged me to go to college. Um, and then life just kind of got in the way. And this year, I lost my dad, who was a veteran. And I turned 40, and I realized that if I couldn't live my dream of serving in the military, I could serve the military. So I look for opportunities to give back to veterans. Um, thankfully, I was able to get involved in the Bucks County Tour of Honor, which happened to be one of the most rewarding things I've done in a long time, going down to D.C. with the, my new friend Gilbert over there. Um, but tonight's not about me. It's about you, the veterans, and the, the folks who support our veterans. Um, if we could uh, recognize uh, World War II veterans, if you could stand up. Any World War II veterans? Gilbert, I know you were on. Mr. Rubini, I uh, graduated with a son, so we sent letters to him and, and chocolate bars that weren't supposed to melt. To our desert store, I remember that. Didn't matter, they were all Korea. 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 Oh, Korea. We said Korea. Korea? Did I? I yep, you, you got it. Korea? No? Yes, fantastic. Um, any um, Afghanistan veterans? Iraq War veterans? Yeah, one more time. One more time. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, um, I don't want to take up all the action in, in the room and speak, but I would like to uh, end my remarks with the, the National Anthem. If everyone would like to stand up and join me, I'd appreciate it. The flag is over here.
So enjoy some snacks, talk to our vendors, performance. All right. Okay, I'm bring a beer over here. Uh, good evening. My name is Joe Stafford. I'm the uh, president of Bucks County Tour of Honor. I'm also the county reporter of deeds. And uh, first thing I want to do is thank uh, Andy Gannon and Frank O'Donnell and certain other uh, individuals from uh, the uh, Northampton Township uh, to inviting us here tonight. We're here for a twofold purpose. One is we're issuing the uh, veteran ID cards where we have over 1,500 businesses throughout Bucks County uh, to uh, get discounts for veterans. All you gotta do is give us your DD-214 and the guys that were in prior to 1950, we need your distrust papers. There's a lot of guys from between the World War II down to 50, I have no idea what we're talking about when we say DD-214. In fact, a lot of guys after 1950 have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> so, that's not, but the other thing we're here for tonight is the Bucks County Tour of Honor. This is a program that we started in the uh, county through the recorder's office approximately four years ago. What we do is we take veterans from World War II and Korea. What we were doing is taking them from World War II and Korea down to Washington to see the memorials that were built for them for their service to our country. This past year, we started taking veterans from the Vietnam era, which goes from October 1961 through April 1975. So now we do two trips a year. One in May of this coming year will be May 7th. That trip is for the Vietnam veterans. We take six buses. I'll give you a little more details what's happening already. And the next trip in October will be October 1st. That's for World War II and Korean veterans. I can tell you now, we take six buses, as I already said, there are three and a half buses full for the May 7th trip. Uh, you guys are lucky that uh, we have over six, uh, we have, what, a, Dan, what do we got, about 50,000 veterans in Bucks County? Close to it. There's close to 50,000 veterans in Bucks County. Uh, we can only take 276 Vietnam veterans at one time, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's tough, but, you know, I can assure you guys, if anybody's here on the, from Vietnam era, if you fill out your applications and you get them into us, you will be on the trip. If you wait and procrastinate, which a lot of us do, you will be on the waiting list. So, so we have the applications for the World War II, Korea, and the Vietnam trip for next year. Um, I guess I want to say is, I can assure you, gentlemen and ladies, I don't, I don't want anybody to think that we're not taking it. If you're a veteran, if you're a woman and you're a veteran, we're, we're more than happy to take you down there to the, the, the Vietnam War and the War Women's Memorial in Vietnam. So I uh, don't think that we're excluding anybody. Um, I'm losing my train of thought here. <laughs> um, has anybody here has been in the, on the trip? Okay. Anybody want to say a word or two before we get into it? Come on. I think you were just on the trip, October 2nd. This gentleman was just on our trip. Korean War veteran. Tell me what you think. I'm not a bus person. But <laughs> <laughs> I was approached. And uh, I'm a Harley rider. And I have escorted the buses at the Welcome Center down at uh, Maryland, uh, the Delaware uh, State Line. But I, I said, well, let me think about it. So it took me a little while to figure it out. I thought, you know, I'm going to do it. So my guardian was, initially, my granddaughter. But it turns out she wasn't able to do it because she, unexpected death came in the family. So she uh, figured it out and did all the paperwork and whatever you do on these fancy telephones that people have and got my youngest son and he and I went. He was my buddy. What a surprise this trip was. 
with police escorted. If you've got two or three lanes of traffic, they split those traffic like God split the ocean. Non-stop. It's non-stop even when you get down there. If the bus moves, there's a police escort. And through Washington, the traffic time, that's something to behold. Um, what will really get you, changing your guard. One of the, we had a 99-year-old veteran. She laid the wreath for Buck County to her arm. And there was another gentleman with her. I thought it was, his, it was uh, her guardian. And he was lower. It, it, I can't explain. I just got to do it. And uh, I don't know what else to say. We get the same treatment coming home. Non stop. Get food. And I had never seen the Air Force uh, Memorial. That's something to see. Their, their drill team is like clockwork, not a sound. It's uh, not a sound, sound made. They use rifles and whatever. And the spears, if you've never seen it, the, the design of it was like a jet and it split off the three of it. It's 300 feet high up on top of the hill. So all I can say is do it. Even if you're not a bus person. <laughs> if I don't go on the bus, I still ride my Harley, I'll ask for it. Although I did have a little bit of that. I must have a guardian. There are no exceptions. Period. And you must take a guardian down with you. It can be anybody you want, with the exception of your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The reason for that is usually when you, your spouse is usually the same age as you are or approximately the same age, and we would have to provide a guardian for them, and we need the seats for the veterans. That's, what, that's the reason we do that. That's the reason. One of them, that's the main reason we do that. Is we, we have problems where we just couldn't uh, they walk off, and then we have to go out and track them down. And stuff. So it's, that's the reason why. It can be your child. It can be your... It can be your grandchildren, it can be any friends, relatives, or anything like that. They must be under the age of 65, too. But that's been dropped. In fact, the board has already dropped it. It's down to 65. We, did, we were at 70, and they just dropped it down to 65 because there's, a, there's about a four and a half mile walk there. Uh, down in Washington that day, there's about four and a half miles of walking, so that's the reason. We do need the wives and the family here at home. There's things that happen on the tour, and we need the support of the families here. Uh, you will be contacted if your veteran or your husband does go. We will call the uh, spouse or whoever's, whoever you work down as your uh, emergency contact. We will contact them uh, for reasons that we cannot disclose right now. Because there's things that happen. You know what I'm talking about. Don't say a word. <laughs> uh, were Vietnam veterans. Vietnam veterans, we do not take guardians for them. We feel that they're mobile enough to get around down there. If you do need assistance, we do provide assistance down there. We have wheelchairs for anybody who goes on a trip, especially World War II and Korea veterans. We do have wheelchairs for everyone. If you need them, we have them. That's why we have guardians, so they can have the wheelchairs, and you know, it just works one another. Another reason is, you're supposed to guardians are their eyes, their hands, and being able to push them a little bit. You know, we had a problem where a veteran was walking around with a bottle of water. He was in his 90s. He was walking around with a bottle of water. He had that same bottle of water all day. He couldn't undo the cat. So that's why he had guardians for him. We feed you from the time you leave. We leave Parks Casino East, where the racetrack is. We leave there at 6 a.m. in the morning. Registration starts at 4.30. We leave at 6. We have 22 police departments throughout Bucks County that assist us on our ride down to the state line and then we're picked up by the National Park Police in Maryland. We shut 95 down. 
and you know, clear snow and uh, yes, a lot, a lot of people get ticked off and I'm, I could have used another word, but yes, it, it does happen. But it's your day, guys, and that's what, and ladies, and that's what we do. Uh, there's not a little thing. I forget. I mentioned, you mentioned a lot of things that I want to cover. So, uh, okay, what I'm going to do. Is anybody else? Anybody else who's been on the trip? I want to say a word. I just had a question about yes, the way uh, last August, uh, after 61 years of marriage. But uh, she, she was a gift. The, the trip itself is. It's first class all the way. I would recommend it to anybody who, who uh, is eligible for this trip. But uh, I had my son as a guardian, and he's about 55 years of age. And uh, but uh, I. Uh, really enjoyed the Korean. I was a hospital corpsman in, in Korea. I dealt with the Marines as they uh, relied on us to keep them alive. Um, I was in Korea from uh, the beginning of December of 1952 and until the end of the war which Eisenhower signed up. Uh, but do you know something's funny? We were sitting in the, uh, I was sitting in the, uh, up in near Wonsan, and the New Jersey, the battleship New Jersey was spiring over our ship, hitting somewhere in the lands. And they did this to, to uh, maybe five minutes of midnight. And it's amazing because we, we thought the, the, the war was over with, uh, but they kept firing and firing and firing. But uh, again, I, I, uh, I go up to the cemetery, it's a beautiful cemetery uh, at Washington's Crossing. And uh, we uh, never knew that I thought I had to die first in order for her to be buried there, and that is wrong. Uh, because of my experience, I have a uh, uh, brother-in-law buried in Gettysburg, and another brother-in-law buried in uh, Indian Town. Uh, But that's all I can say is if you get the opportunity to get the a tour of honor, we, make sure you take it. It is uh, first place all the way. We had, uh, in fact, there was a uh, helicopter flying all the way back um, above the bus number one, and then I found out that he was the brother of the Team Toyota guy. And, uh, but he, they were saying that he would land on the first bus. We were in the second bus, but uh, all the fire companies were on the bridges with the, uh, with the, uh, Huh? We're so good. Good. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's it. Okay. Thank you, sir. A brief history of what the tour is all about. There's a lot more that goes on than this. I can also tell you another thing is before I tell Christine that you know, let it roll, Northampton Township, there is a veteran that lives in Northampton Township. His name is Art Lohan. He's a resident of Northampton Township. His mural is on the Korean War. So it looks like there's an, and we also have quite a few, uh, we have a few Medal of Honor winners in uh, Bucks County. So we have a lot of details that we bring out to uh, all the veterans in Bucks County and things that have happened in Bucks. So uh, why don't we show everybody the tape and then we'll answer some questions. Can we anybody hit the lights? Can we hit the lights a little bit up front here? Okay. Okay. Another 
understood by those who practice terrorism and prey upon their neighbors. As for the enemies of freedom, those who are potential adversaries, they will be reminded that peace is the highest aspiration of the American people. We will negotiate for it, sacrifice for it, we will not surrender for it now or ever. We are Americans. This is Brian Fitzpatrick, your representative here in the nation's capital. You and I both know that Bucks County has a long and proud history of service. From the Patriots who crossed the Delaware with General Washington to men and women abroad today and every generation in between. This deep connection of service is one of the reasons why our county so proudly honors our veterans for their courage and personal sacrifice. Look no further than the Bucks County Tour of Honor, an amazing program aimed at celebrating and thanking our veterans for their bravery during World War II, the Korean War, and now Vietnam. <coughs> Believe me, this day-long trip to Washington, D.C. is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Together, we will visit some of the most significant war monuments in American history, and in doing so, ensure that future generations respect and honor our veterans' noble efforts and will continue to keep their spirit alive. Probably one of the best experiences of my life. I just loved every minute. I, I couldn't, I couldn't get over the obviously hundreds of details that were taken care of meticulously. No, nothing was left to, to chance. It was just, it just went perfectly. Video can't though. The video can't. Alright. Listen up. My name is Jim Dunning. I'm the president of the William Penn chapter of the Association of the United States Army. We're about to begin a very formal, solemn recognition ceremony on behalf of the Department of Defense and the Secretary of Defense. I'm authorized to do this because the Association of the United States Army William Penn Chapter is a duly authorized commemorative partner. I've had the honor of presiding at six other prior uh, commemoration uh, ceremonies that have been held here in Northampton and Philadelphia where we recognized almost more than 500 veterans at the National Guard Armory in, uh, on Southampton Road. Uh, was a tremendous success. We've had other ceremonies where the numbers have been smaller, but the, the intention is no less sincere. All right. Um, I want to thank the people who organized the uh, ceremony of the Veterans Expo tonight for allowing us the opportunity to conduct this commemoration ceremony. Just a bit of background. In 2007, the 110th Congress authorized the Secretary of Defense to conduct a program commemorating the 50th anniversary of uh, the uh, Vietnam War. The commemoration's primary mission is authorized by Congress is to thank and honor the veterans and their families for their service. By any standard, this is a noble endeavor 
for all the right reasons. We leave discussions and debates over the political or social controversies that occurred 50 years ago to others. By the presidential proclamation, the commemoration extends from Memorial Day 2012 through Veterans Day 2025. So we fully expect that there will be others like this. The commemoration recognizes all who served in active duty on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces from November 1st, 1955 to May 15th, 1975. Nine million Americans served during Vietnam, and last year there were fewer than seven million living Vietnam veterans. We make no distinction between veterans who served in country, in theater, or who were stationed elsewhere during the Vietnam War period. All were called to serve, and the overwhelming majority of those veterans served honorably and admirably. Before we honor those who served during this Vietnam era, let's pause for a moment, a moment of silence, to remember those we lost. Though they are not with us tonight, we remember and thank them for their courage and strength. May they all rest in peace. Another formal recognition that we'd like to make, uh, we're going to do it right now, is the, is the uh, POW MIA. I'm going to ask Lieutenant Colonel Frank McDonald, who is a uh, retired U.S. Army. He's also a past commander and current vice commander of the American Legion Post 79 in New Hope. Frank has the traditional POW MIA commemoration. Frank. Thank you, Jim. I'd like to thank Joe for everything he's done with this tour, and Joe will actually be joining my post on Thursday. We keep him busy at night, so I think it's a great thing for him. And Andy, for putting this together, I think this is a great opportunity here in North Hampton. Now I'd like to uh, proceed with the formal uh, POW MIA ceremony. Those who have served and those currently serving in uniform service in the United States are forever mindful that the sweetness of enduring peace has always been tainted by the bitterness of personal sacrifice. We are compelled to never forget that while we enjoy our daily pleasures, there are others who have endured and may still be enduring the agonies of pain, deprivation, and eternity. We call your attention to this small table, which occupies a place of dignity and honor near the head table. It is set for one, symbolizing the fact that members of our armed forces are missing from our ranks. They are referred to as POWs and MIAs. We call them comrades. They are unable to be with their loved ones and families tonight, so we join together to pay our humble tribute to them and bear witness to their continued absence. This table, set for one, is small, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner, alone against his or her suppressors. The tablecloth is white, symbolic of the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. The single red rose in the vase signifies the blood they may have shed in sacrifice to ensure the freedom of our beloved United States of America. This rose reminds us of, of the family and friends of our missing comrades who keep the faith while awaiting their return. The yellow ribbon on the vase represents the yellow ribbons worn on the lapels of thousands who demand with unyielding determination a proper accounting of our comrades who are not among us tonight. A slice of lemon on the plate reminds us of their bitter fate. The salt sprinkled on the plate reminds us of the countless fallen tears of families as they wait. The glass is inverted. They cannot toast with us here tonight. The chair is empty. They are not here. The candle is reminiscent of the light of hope, which gives life, which, which lives in our hearts to eliminate their way home, away from their captors to the open arms of a grateful nation. Let us pray to the Supreme Commander that all of our comrades will soon be back within our ranks. Let us remember and never forget their sacrifices. May God forever watch over them 
and protect them and their families. You are not forgotten so long as there is one left in whom your memory remains. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. It's now my honor to uh, recognize the service of those gentlemen and ladies, if there are any ladies uh, who uh, are with us tonight who have uh, qualified to receive the Vietnam commemoration, 50th year commemoration pin. I'm gonna ask those veterans to form up in the uh, aisle over here to my left. Anybody who uh, registered or checked in? Uh, we're going to use uh, Andrew as our adjutant tonight. If he could take a position at the head of the column at that aisle. Over there. The head of the column. All right. The adjutant will announce your name. Come forward. It's now my honor to introduce the ranking officer who will be pinning the commemorative pin on the veterans tonight. Uh, Colonel Larry Rubini, who's our, our very own resident of Northampton Township. Colonel Rubini. <coughs> Colonel Rubini. Larry. Somebody. Sorry. I just introduced you. <laughs> the trite old phrase, thank you for your service, comes to mind. And people, servicemen hear this, and they hear it from a civilian community that has lost touch with the military community. Tonight's the night that we try to bring this together again, when all our veterans are recognized and our Vietnam veterans are thanked. So presenting our pins. All right, if there's, if there's family members and you'd like to take photographs of your uh, veteran receiving his being pinned, come up to center aisle and take it from this angle, please. All right. Adjutant. Master Sergeant Gilbert Howland. Come Step forward. forward. Send him up. Right here, sir. <laughs> Corporal Conrad Lau, get some forward. Specialist Joseph McGuire, please come forward. <laughs> Make way for uh, Specialist McGuire to come forward. Silverman, Matthew, Delirio, please come forward. Engineman, Stephen, Ben Renslier, please come forward. Coast. 
Thomas Riley E4, please come forward. Petty Officer Thomas Riley. <laughs> Sergeant Joseph Betts, please come forward. Specialist Richard Kroger, please come forward. Lieutenant Commander James Caldwell, please come forward. Sigmund Ian Katz, please come forward. Robert Piscaglio, please come forward. Richard Fritz, please come forward. Uh, 
Specialist Ed Thomas, please come forward. Sergeant Burton Pine, please come forward. Staff Sergeant James Petra, please come forward. U.S. Army, please come forward. Thank you. 
One more? Two more? Come forward. We have more minutes. That's okay. Master Sergeant Jack Fine.
give them a rousing round of applause and welcome them home. My pleasure to uh, preside at this official Vietnam recognition ceremony. And one more time, thank you to all our Vietnam vets. Thank you, Jim, and the ABC. Um, you all that served in Vietnam were men who didn't necessarily go there to fight. Um, you didn't want to necessarily. Our country asked you to go and you went and you did your, your, your duty and you served our country and you did not necessarily get the reception coming home that you deserved and I'm glad that I could play a small role along with Jim and the AUSA, AUSA in giving you that welcome that you deserve. Although late, it's better late than never. So thank you so much for coming. Yes, sir. These are brand new ladies and gentlemen. They're here for the taking. There's two, uh, this lost one. All right, two bumper stickers. Both speak to your service in Vietnam. I also have some tchotchkes, some AUSA giveaways. If you want to join AUSA, I want you to feel free. I've got membership applications. It's relatively inexpensive. But I've got uh, first aid kits and ballpoint pens and good stuff like that. So help yourself after this is over. These will be on the table. Those who may not know, Northampton actually lost seven residents in Vietnam. One of them is currently MIA, um, Mr. Sukis. So the, the QWMA table should have special meaning for us here at the campus because we are still missing one of our own. Rachel? Rachel helped me put this together along with my wife. I'd like to thank very much. Uh, just get pissed. That was so wonderful. This made this whole event so worth it to, to help put this on tonight. So thank you guys. And uh, why we have so many Vietnam veterans here. Okay, hold on a second. Thank you. 